Following Hickson Gracie's win at Valley Tudo Japan, he was now as renowned in the birthplace of Jiu Jitsu as Hoist was in the US. So much so that the big Puro Resu, Japanese for pro wrestling promotion, UWFI, offered him a job. He turned it down, insulted by the very notion that he participated in public play fighting. Hickson's hostility towards professional wrestling was ironic in light of the intertwined history of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu and that of the fake sport. The roots of modern MMA go back to the beginning of the 20th century when Japanese judokas arrived in the West looking to spread their modernized Jiu-Jitsu. There they confronted America and Europe's own homegrown grappling arts, namely catch as catch can wrestling. Soon professional wrestling promoters would begin staging jujitsu versus catch wrestling contests, often as anything goes matches that allowed for punching, kicking, grappling, and submission holds. In other words, MMA fights. One such Japanese judoka who ended up working the professional wrestling circuit of the early 20th century was Mitsuyu Maeda, also known as Konde Koma, which was Portuguese for Count Combat. Traveling the globe, Maeda proved himself as one of the toughest men on the planet. His skills and fighting knowledge were so great that a professional wrestling promoter asked him to instruct his son in judo. That man was none other than Gastão Gracie, Hickson Gracie's own grandfather, and his pupil was Carlos Gracie, Hickson's uncle. Carlos would end up teaching his brothers, including Hickson's father Helio, what he learned from Maeda. They rebranded it Gracie Jiu-Jitsu and took part in no-holds-barred matches to show it off. These bouts were called Vale Tudo, which means anything goes in Portuguese. Over the next 80 years, the Gracie family and their followers honed their style to perfection against a parade of challengers from a variety of styles, including Luta Livre and Muay Thai. By the early 1990s, the Gracie style was taking over the world. This created all sorts of problems for Japanese wrestling promotions like UWF International, which advertised its wrestlers as the toughest fighters in the world. When Hickson turned down an offer to work with them, something had to be done. With the honor of Japan's biggest puro resu promotion at stake, the UWFI brass sent a six foot, 200 pound up and coming wrestler named Yoji Anjo to the States to call out the brash Brazilian. He made the mistake of showing up at Hickson's gym with a contingent of Japanese reporters. Maybe Anjo thought Hickson would get the pro wrestling showbiz angle. Maybe he thought his size and skill at catch wrestling meant he had nothing to fear from Hickson. Anjo was gravely mistaken on all counts. The Brazilian had been relaxing at home with his family when he got word that his gym had been invaded. He stormed straight over and invited Anjo to join him, alone, in the locked gym. When the two emerged a few minutes later, Anjo's bloody and battered face told the tale. Hickson had taken the big grappler down, used a jiu-jitsu technique called a gift wrap to render him helpless while he inflicted a sustained beating. Anjo got his face rubbed in the big blind spot of the Japanese real wrestling movement. They had never trained for striking on the ground, a key and brutal element of the Brazilian fighting style. Hickson's fame only increased further when he won the second Valley Tudo Japan tournament in 1995. Meanwhile, wrestlers, both the Puro Resu in Japan and amateur wrestlers in the US, were following the same path as their forefathers a century earlier, studying their jiu-jitsu opponents and coming up with new techniques in order to defeat it in the ring. <laughs> 